Welcome everybody, I'm Dan, your friendly fishmonger, and we do this every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, this live stream, that's 9 p.m. Eastern. Glad to have you here, welcome aboard, and we're going to do what we do today, which is, I'll tell you how things are going here at dansfish.com. Um, got a large import in, it did arrive, which is fantastic. Had a, a bit of a kerfuffle with it that I'll tell you about, it'll be a fun story and making progress on the warehouse. So we'll get into all that. But first, the shipment report. For those that are new, every, um, every week, every Wednesday, I give a report on how the fish that I shipped since I talked to you last did. My goal is 100% of the fish arrive alive and do well long term. That's what I'm shooting for. In reality, the percentage as of now is about 99.62% of the fish arrive alive and do well long term. So that's what we're doing. Um, sound is good, Victoria Artist says. Awesome. So um, we've had some sound troubles in the past. That's why that's good news. So um, I do everything I shipped this week, as far as I've heard, has done well for everybody. So that's fantastic. I did ship, oh, it's got to be 150, couple hundred um, chili rasbors over the last couple weeks. And I did find out today, or yesterday, I think yesterday, that um, one of the rasbors that I sent that we thought had arrived and was going to do fine. Um, ended up passing away. So this is all one customer. One customer bought a, a group of them and they all arrived alive. Everything seemed good. Then about a couple days later, I think one passed away and then I heard yesterday that another one had. So, but that's one, um, I think there were probably 12 of them that that person ordered and that's out of sending out 150 to 200. So I haven't heard from anyone else that they're having problems. So I don't think it's a general thing. I just think there's maybe something in this person's tank that doesn't agree with them. So um, that's what I'm thinking because I haven't heard from anyone else. So if you have got chili rasbors from me and they're, uh, they're struggling or not doing well, please do let me know. Otherwise I'm operating under the assumption that they're fine and just something happened with this one box of fish or in this customer's tank. So that's where we're at. So that's not this week's shipment. That's a shipment that went out last week. But apart from that, um, two fish which died, one a couple days after it arrived and the other about a week or so after it arrived. I think everyone's doing well. So that's the shipment report for today. Um, if if I'm wrong, if I've missed someone that had a problem, please do chime in so I don't, you know, come across dishonest or something like that. But that's to the best of my memory where we are at. The giveaway tonight, let's get to that, is provided by my friend Diego at Pets Otix. Diego is one of the first people ever to have put a store on Get Gills. And so um, it, it's really nice when you're a brand new company just starting out and you get your first couple users, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's everything. So it was really nice. I'll, I'll never forget when Diego's store appeared and all his products appeared. Um, it, was, it, it was a good day for us. It, it was just exciting that someone was using it. <laughs> and there were a couple other folks on too at that time. But um, I think Diego is the first store I ever bought from at getgills.com. So I'll never kind of forget his store. So Diego is generously providing a mystery plant pack tonight. It'll contain, I believe, three different kinds of plants. Don't know what. That's part of the, the fun. But if you'd like to enter tonight to win the plant pack from Petsotics, you do that by entering hashtag go Diego go. That's it. Geo Diego Geo. So that's how you enter tonight. If you just put hashtag go Diego go in the um, in a comment in the chat, then you'll be entered and we'll draw that a little later on tonight. For those that want to know more about Petsotics slash multiple aquariums, here's the YouTube channel. Check him out. It's got 70 videos. So there's plenty of content there to uh, dip your beak into to get to know Petsotics a bit. So thank you again, Diego, for sponsoring the giveaway tonight. It's our sponsoring, providing the giveaway tonight. I, I feel like sponsorship is something very official. <laughs> so I, I guess the proper way to say it is providing the plants for the giveaway tonight. So I really appreciate it. 
Someone in the chat um, right before we went live was asking what my logo was. So my logo is just a black and white silhouette taken from this picture right here. This is a picture I took of one of my breeding males of my colony of Chromaphiosimian um, bivitatum from the fung collection point. So this is a non-annual killifish, one of my favorite fish of all time. I don't have any of the Chromaphiosimian type killifish at the moment. I wish I did. Um, this was taken with an old point and shoot like four gig camera um, or four megabyte sorry megapixel it was one of those old power shot canon point and shoot four megapixel pictures in my apartment in los angeles back when i was a student so it's a very old picture but it's still one of my favorites um and one of the only good pictures I ever got of fish with that old point-and-shoot camera. So I use that for my silhouette because it's one of my favorite fish of all time. So for those that were asking, or the gentleman that was asking, um, I think it was a gentleman. <laughs> I'm going to get myself in hot water here. Um, that's what that fish is. So now let me give you folks... Um, an import report. So the import did arrive, which is fantastic. Also, I wasn't shorted anything. I believe everything I ordered that was invoiced, and I got the invoice in advance a few weeks ago, actually arrived, which is fantastic. Um, there was one snafu, which is that there were nine boxes of fish that came in, so one box more than last time. Eight of the boxes arrived when they should have, one of the boxes got lost in the mail and got held up for four extra days, uh, not in the mail, in transit and got held up for four extra days. So most of the fish arrived on Friday, but one of the boxes didn't get here until Monday. So as you can imagine, I was very worried. Most exporters only um, package fish to be kind of 24 to 36 hours in the in transit because they're just going from airport to airport so generally there's a lot of fish um, put into a single bag and if if anything at all happens things go south pretty quickly one reason I, I reordered from this new supplier that I have found is because they do just about the best packing job I found that an exporter that sells in bulk will do and it's a good thing because I'm happy to report that even though there was a substantial delay, most of the fish came in uh, and are, are doing fine. Now, they had a rough trip. Um, they were exposed to more ammonia for longer than the other fish. So there are going to be re some repercussions. But in general, there weren't any bags that were like total losses or that I lifted up and it's just a stinky mess or anything like that, which honestly is what I would expect from most of my suppliers. If something was in the mail or in the mail, I keep saying mail in transit for, um, you know, three, four extra days. So I'm still really impressed with this new supplier. I think that from what I've been able to gather, they're a hobbyist at heart. They go collect fish all the time. They're looking for new species all the time. They're very active in the hobby. They write articles and things that are often published in Amazonas Magazine and other places. Um, so I just think that this isn't your typical exporter. I think this is someone that actually cares and it, it really shows in their packaging and things. So the fish that were delayed though, um, they're probably going to take, well, they're definitely going to take a little longer just because I've had them for less time. But also, I'm going to give them an extra week or two to recover just because anytime there's exposed, um, there's an extended time frame of exposure to ammonia, there can be things that take a while for me to feel comfortable are resolved. So those would be... The Glossogobius flavipinus, which is a really cool, small, predatory goby. Think of a sleeper goby, but with a bright yellow anterior dorsal fin. And it doesn't get too big. So that was one. Um, the other one was, hang on, let me find it here. The Kamaka rainbows were delayed. The Blairi, Chilotherina Blairi, were delayed. The... Um, Melanotania Fredericii, or Frederickii, Frederick, 
Frederick I. I have to think of Sound of Music. Frederick! <laughs> Frederick I were delayed. Um, and I think that... Oh, and the Tenelis. Pseudomugil Tenelis were delayed, and Melanotania species Sungur were delayed. So those are the, what is that, six species that will take... I'm just going to hold them for an extra week or two before I sell them, um, just to make sure, because there could be damage that I just can't see, and I want to give them time to heal up from any of that. So that's kind of the crazy part. Um, and if anything drives me away from FedEx into UPS with my hair on fire, it's going to be anytime I have to call the corporate office and try to get something done. I spent hours Friday in my local office, my local FedEx office did too. There's, I've become chummy with them and they know that I do fish and they do everything they can to help them do well because they care they called as well together we could not get a hold of someone who could change the shipping for saturday delivery because for fedex to deliver saturday you have to it's a it's a special thing you have to tell them yes i want delivery on saturday so i called them like look i have my credit card right here i would like to upgrade to Saturday shipping otherwise these poor fish aren't gonna get here till Monday and I tried and they tried and we could not break through all that red tape to get that done I finally got a call Saturday from someone who said all right we've opened your case number um, they'll be there Monday and I was like great the thing is that's not helpful <laughs> they were already gonna be here Monday so uh, so yeah trying to work on that I uh, they put me in contact with a local guy who um, runs some FedEx accounts so I might I have a meet I had a phone meeting with him and I have a meeting with him and his boss next week and we might be able to set something up where uh, I don't have to go through corporate well they'll, they'll give me a, a number that they don't give out basically so I can get a hold of a real person who knows my business and knows what I'm doing and can make decisions. So they are working to try to work it out. So I'm hopeful that long term, ah, my feet are hot. I'm taking off my socks. <laughs> Ta-da! That's better. <laughs> How professional is that? Um, so I'm hopeful that in the long term we'll be able to resolve this. But this is the one thing that is different than when I worked with UPS. With UPS, my local office could make decisions. I could talk to my local office and say, I need to upgrade to Saturday shipping, and they would do that. Or I need these held for pickup, and they would just do that, as opposed to having to go through the entire corporate chain, be on hold forever, talk to someone who can't help me, get moved to someone else who can't help me, and go through that. You guys all know what it's like, right? It's like call, calling your... Uh, your cable company, same kind of thing. So, um, that was the saga. I was very worried because I'm like, man, there's, I kind of expected the whole box to be a big stinky mess. It was pretty cold in Colorado. It's getting down at nighttime and just that many fish in a bag that long. But one thing I really like about this guy is he doesn't stuff a bunch of fish in a bag. He, he spaces them out. Instead of putting 50 fish in a bag, where other suppliers would put 50 fish in a bag, he puts maybe 15 fish in a bag of that size. So um, I'm really glad he did that. So it costs me a little more in freight to do that, but the fish come in better. So yeah, it's working out well. So anyway, that was the story. Eight out of nine boxes arrived right on time and we're doing pretty good. Um, one box was delayed, still doing surprisingly well. But um, but I know when ammonia happens, there's stuff you can't see that sometimes doesn't manifest for a few days uh, or, or a little longer than that even. So I'm just watching them, treating them with TLC, and I hope they do okay. Oh, my voice. I have been on the phone pretty much constantly since 7.30 a.m. this morning. Um, the warehouse is coming along great, but... I've had a heck of a time finding an activated carbon filter that can handle um, 350 to 700 gallons per minute of water flow. Um, 
that doesn't cost you know over half a million dollars. So I've spent about oh I'd say three days solid work today the final day I hope uh, trying to track down a company <clears throat> or a product that would do that for <laughs> some of the quotes were like over five hundred thousand. Same with the UV filters, right? Some have been over a hundred thousand. Nothing less than oh, nothing less than like one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars yet. Until today, I did nothing but concentrate on that problem today, and I was able to find a company that can do it for a reasonable rate and has a pretty good system. So I'm happy to say that item's checked off. The last item that I'm still working on is a boiler. So working on a boiler that can handle high capacity um, and that doesn't cost you know hundreds of thousands of dollars so you just got to keep working the contacts googling talking to the the fish farms and the um, aquaculture companies and things and finally you you get to the company or the person that provides that so and it, it's, it's just funny, a, a lot of these systems are meant for like pharmaceutical manufacturing or hospitals or other things like that, chemical manufacturing. And so they're very high end, so they're very expensive. It, it takes a while to find the system that does a good enough job, but is meant for like, you know, an aquarium facility, <laughs> which, you know, you, you, it, it's just a different animal and uh, there's different rates charged for that. So finally found that. Looking for the boiler. I'm happy to say I did find the heat exchanger. So for those who were here last week, I believe it was last week, um, it was suggested, why don't I look at water heat exchangers like I use with my air heat exchanger. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. So I did dig in and I was able to find a company, uh, uh, an engineer at a company that kind of does nothing but uh, make heat exchangers for water applications. And it came in at a, at a reasonable rate. So I'm still looking at other companies, but even if no one else has one that works for me, I've got one I can use. So the last piece is that boiler, just waiting on that. And I'll hit that hard tomorrow. I, I'm waiting on a lot of companies to call me back. Once that's done, then I'll know the equipment I'm using. I'll know how much power each piece needs. I'll know how much drainage for condensate or backwash or whatever each piece of the system needs. Um, then I can finally calculate A, my cost of running the facility in gas and power. How much is it gonna cost just to run it? And B, um, how much power do I need? How much plumbing do I need? Where do I need it? So that the plumbers and um, HVAC guys and electricians and stuff can start giving me accurate, accurate bids. So we're real close. Um, we've got things pushed through pretty well. We have a, we've met with folks at City Hall quite a bit. They're all informed. They're all pretty excited about the project because it's so different. And they're also excited because most of my customers are outside of Sheridan, Wyoming, and so they like the fact that people from outside the area buy fish from me because it helps our little town economically. Uh, these little towns in Wyoming can use all the economic help they can get. <laughs> so they're excited about that. Uh, but I have a meeting with uh, basically the planning committee at City Hall on Friday just to dot some I's and cross some T's. And then from there, I don't think it'll be too long before um, don't want to jinx it there's still ink that hasn't dried but I don't think it'll be too long before we can break ground and start on this thing so it's coming along for those that are wondering how the expansion into the warehouse is going um, I got to meet with uh, Rick Stidham who is in the chat frequently he came out this week from Kentucky and it was cool I got to give him a tour got to show him the new property where the wa warehouse will be built and um, and spend some time with the guy. So, uh, Rick, I know you're probably not listening because you're still on the road, but if you are, it was great to have you. If you're watching the replay, great to see you, man. I hope you had a good trip. All right, with that, um, we're going to get into questions and comments. Before I go over that in detail, I see Brian Nepple has asked, hope you are well. 
Any good ideas for good books on fish keeping, aquariums, the hobby in general? I would like to refer you to seahorses.com. Seahorses.com, I'll link it right here for you, is um, run by my fish godfather, the guy that mentored me through um, my fish keeping from the time I was 13, 14 years old. His name's Jim Forche. He runs the Aquatic Bookshop. So I was really lucky as a kid. I was into fish. I met Jim. He had tons of killifish and a bunch of other neat stuff that you couldn't find anywhere else. And he literally owned an aquatic bookstore, a bookstore with thousands and thousands of books just about aquariums and about aquarium fish. So that's kind of how I got my start. I, I was uh, surrounded by really cool fish and by tons of information. So I would start by going to seahorses.com, seeing what they have there. If there's a subject you're particularly interested in or um, something you're trying to figure out or learn about, you can email Jim, uh, his, his email's on the website, and he can direct you. Um, there's, there's no better guy to kind of help you find the right book. So that's where I would refer you to. With that, I'm going to get up to the top of the chat, do questions and comments. Before I do, I want to thank my mods who moderate the chat. Um, thanks, guys. Appreciate you so much. And just one little ground rule is please don't spam the chat. Please just ask your question once, unless it's obvious that I've missed it. If I've scrolled down past it and I, I missed it, then please feel free to list it again. But um, if I'm 20 minutes from getting to your question or comment because I'm behind and you just keep posting it again and again, that just annoys the mods and uh, it makes their job harder. So please do post your question or comment. I'll get to all of them that I can, um, but please don't repost it unless you know I've gone past it, okay? Cool. Thanks, everybody. Now, um, I am going to see if I missed. I did. I missed some super chats. Sorry, folks. Lance Takata. <laughs> Hang on, Lance. Lance Takata. <laughs> Sorry. Lance Takata. Five dollars. Thanks, Lance. I appreciate it. Hey, Dance Fish. Thank you for the transparency and your great communication with this community. Hey, Lance, thanks for being part of the community. Thanks for the $5 and, and just thanks for uh, being active. And anytime anyone asks a question and you can help with them, just respond, help them out. That's that's what we're here for. So I, I appreciate you being here and being active in the community. And you're welcome. I, I do my best to be transparent. I do my best to uh, add value. And sometimes I screw up and give misinformation and I don't know it till later on in life or when Michael Wilson calls me out on it later in an email. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Wilson, for keeping me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> um, but, but I do my best. And I think that's all, all most of the YouTubers in the fish fam are doing. They're doing their best. They're talking and giving the information based on wherever they're at in the hobby. And as long as they're open and honest about where they're at in the hobby and what they're doing, that's great. If you don't know what you're doing and you're trying to sell yourself as an expert, that's where we get into a problem. But I feel like that's few and far between in the fish fam. I feel like most people are actually adding value. Fish Tank Barn, $1.99. Thanks, Mike. Thumbs up to you too, buddy. With that, I'm going to scroll up and get to questions and comments. I am in live chat. I know it doesn't look like it, but I am. All right, Rod King is the first one I can see. Betapicta and Swordtails arrived in great shape today. All right, Rod, I'm glad to hear it. Cool. Um, hope they do well for you. I did my darndest to get you a male and female of the Betapicta, um, and I hope I succeeded. I tried. I think I did. John Cox, that is one of my favorite fish, and want them again. Chrome Aphio Simeon or Aphios, <laughs> Aphio parentheses chrome simian <laughs> vivitatum from fung my favorite of the chrome Aphio simians probably because it's the first one i kept in bred and raised successfully um so there's reasons of nostalgia for that but also they grow a little larger than your typical chrome Aphio simians and so they're just a larger one it's easier to see the, the details on that large dorsal fin and all that for those that don't know the fish we're talking about if you came in a little late this is the fish we're talking about 
Chromaphiosimian bivitatum from fung. Or fungi, I don't know. All right. Petsonics. Hey, Diego. I love that. The import report. It's never going to get old, at least not for me. Hey, as long as Diego's into it, it'll keep going. <laughs> HC Aqua. Hey, HC. Good to see you, Jesse. I hope you are doing well. Thanks for coming by. A lot of Go Diego Go going on to enter the plant giveaway. Rockford Fishkeeping. Glad you could make it. Did they make you pay for the Saturday on Monday delivery? No, no, they didn't. Um, I really wanted to though. I wanted those fish to show up on Saturday. I tried my best to throw money at them. No one knew how to do it. So, yep, <laughs> it did not work, but I didn't have to pay extra, no. Big Yak 35, as you should, no socks fish room. Yep, that's right. I've got a good friend. Um, who is constantly barefoot, even in the winter here in Wyoming. He's just a no-shoes kind of guy wherever he goes. And he, uh, <laughs> he gigs around, he plays guitar at the local bars and events and stuff like that. And it's just him, but the name of him is the Barefoot Band. And I always thought that was hilarious. <laughs> a, it's not a band, it's one dude. And he's always barefoot, even when it's like 30 below. <clears throat> Rockford Fishkeeping. He used to be a pipe fitter. We order pipe and supplies from a place called Porter Pipe Supply. Might check with them. Well, I will make a little note ski here. Porter Pipe Supply. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, this project, um, it's been exciting. It's uh, we're. We're moving faster than I think any construction project has a right to do. We're putting in um, sewer and water mains to the property. We're, we're doing like a ton. We, the, the trees have been cleared off of it. It's, it's coming along. So I think, uh, I really think, oh, where's some wood? Here's some. I really think pretty soon we might actually be able to get the walls and ceiling up um before the hard freeze of winter which is my dream because then i can spend the winter building out the inside of the facility so when it thaws again we can actually open um that's my dream but so far it's it's coming along pretty well now there's days don't get me wrong like yesterday was one of them where my investor and i one of one of my investors my local investor um who's really supporting this and providing the land and all that kind of got to a point where we had talked to city hall we had talked to an engineer we had we've been talking with an architect we had gone back and forth and we just sat down and looked at each other and i was like and he's like i'm confused and i was like yep <laughs> <laughs> but we were able to step back, um, get some clarification today, and, and, and charge forward again and make some real progress. But it's been interesting. Brian Nipple, are you? Hope you are well. Any? Oh, already did that one. Thanks, Brian Nipple. Um, Moonstone Aquatics. That's exciting. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Now I think we still. I don't have the hard numbers yet. If if. I guess I should mention this just because I it would be helpful. Um, we have most of the investment we need, at least enough to get the building up and going and stuff. Um, in order to really fill it with tanks all the way, though, we are going to need some more. So if anyone is interested, we are looking for fifty to hundred thousand more dollars uh, to round out this round of fundraising, which I think will be the only round of fundraising we ever do, honestly because uh, future growth will be funded just by the proceeds of the company itself. Um, but if anyone missed the train and is interested in investing in Dan's Fish, uh, let me know. 50 to 100,000 is what we're trying to raise still. You don't have to do all that. Um, we'll look at anything um, from $10,000 on up. So if you're interested, email me, dan at dancefish.com. I'll send you the business plan and everything. If that looks good, and we'll talk any questions you have and if everything seems good to you then i'll send you the paperwork and we can sign and, and make it official um i do just want to say this is not a security this is there's a risk you, you would be betting on me that i'm going to be able to get this up and running profitably at scale 
and get you some return. There's always the possibility it doesn't work out. So the basic thing is I don't plan on losing your money. I plan on making this work, but don't, don't invest anything if you can't afford to lose your investment in case things didn't happen the way we want them to. Now I'm, I'm going to make it happen. Like I'm determined. I'm a hard worker. Um, I have a solid plan. I have good people that are good with business and numbers and all that helping. I, I think it's going to go. But even with that, there's always the chance that it won't work out. So if, if you can afford to invest, great. If you want to invest, but if you lost your investment or didn't see a return for a couple years um, or, or never got a return, then, then don't invest. Um, but anyone else that's interested, dan at dancefish.com, I'd love to talk to you. The chubby guppy. Oh, yep. We are in live chat. I'll prove it. There we are. This is what I'm looking at. Live chat with all these orange squares. It just never shows it to you. <laughs> and I don't know why. <laughs> My bad. Should have said porter pipe for boiler price. Okay, Rockford. I'll check them out for a boiler. Scott Schillinger. What is a good way to curb aggression in epistogrammas while they are trying to pair? Okay, I have two pair and the young males are aggressive. They will be. The, so the best thing I can think of for that, if you're trying to do multiple pairs or multiple males, some of them are harem spawners, um, in a single tank is the tank has to be big enough and arranged in such a way that each male has a separate territory, an ample territory to defend and feel like I've got my territory without having to take over the other male's territory, okay? Now, when I say big enough, that depends on how the tank is set up. A 20 long might be big enough if there's if it's pretty much divided in half and there's some kind of real line of sight block across the middle, like thick plants or um, lots of rock work or something like that. That could work. Then they naturally have two territories. It depends though. Some of them need a four foot or a foot, six foot footprint to exist in the same tank together. There are some epistos that are just super aggressive, but your best chance is to use line of sight blocks with decorations and plants and stuff like that to make more than one kind of natural territory. And it's natural for the male to stay in there and defend that without feeling they have to conquer the whole tank to have a distinct territory. That's my, my best advice for that. Um, yeah. If anyone here breeds Epistos and has done multiple pairs, uh, would you leave any advice or thoughts you might have? You might have things that are better than what I thought of. Cheesy Sports Fanatic, are you going to do a video showing off the fish from the import? When do you expect them to be on the site? So I am going to do a video. <clears throat> um, Okay, so basically my priority right now is to get everything. I, I have to do some scale drawings and things for the plumbers to understand things well enough to be able to bid on, on the project. Same with the electrician, stuff like that. So my, my priority right now is to get all those scale drawings done with enough information that they can go out to bid. Um, I wanted to get to that tonight, but I still have to pack fish tonight. <laughs> I've, I was literally on the phone all day today trying to find a boiler and, and the carbon filter. Um, so I haven't packed tonight. So it's going to be late night packing tonight. Um, so by the end of the week, I guess, would be more accurate. I hope to have all that done well enough that it's out for bid. Once that's done, once I have all the information out there and folks can start bidding on it, then my part slows down a little bit because then it's up to the contractors and subcontractors to bid and, and get everything kind of going. So right now I'm holding up the process because they don't have the information. So I got to get that done. Once that's done, then, um, then I can start thinking about making a video of the fish and getting that all up and everything. I think what will happen is, so they'll, the first ones will be available for sale. They came in Friday. 
So they'll be listed for sale on see so this this Friday will be a week on probably the first or second of October. It could be the third, just depends on how the week goes. But somewhere first, second, third of October, they'll be listed for sale. And what I what I plan on doing is just going around and doing a video and showing each fish briefly, kind of like I did with the the beta videos, so you can see all the different fish um, and and know what they are when you order them. Because I highly doubt I'm going to be able to take good pictures of each fish and have pictures listed with each listing um, by the time they're up for sale. So I will do a video though. Um, the, I've got to though, I have to make sure that I'm not holding up the warehouse project before I can transfer into the kind of fish selling um, side of things. So I have to kind of play that one by ear a little bit. All right. Joseph DeLuca, will eight female and two male in Bellis work in a 20 long? Um, they will. Yeah, I think that would probably be okay. I'm assuming when you say in Bellis, these are true like wild type in Bellis. There are lots of in Bellis sold that have been cupped and have obviously been crossed with um, Splendens to get dragon scale and they're usually like a bright shiny blue color or white color there's different colors of them um be very careful because sometimes when you if you're like ordering embellis or something there are some embellis strains that aren't pure embellis strains um or have been jarred and things and so they are still aggressive but provided you're getting normal old embellis i think you'll be fine you'll want lots of plants and things though um but in a 20 long, if you have enough plants and things, that's enough space for the males to kind of get away from each other um, and let the females swim among them. I think you would be okay. Now, if you run into a situation, which can often happen if you just get too aggressive fish, to where even though there's space and there's line of sight blocks and stuff, they're still just keying in on each other, then you might consider getting like up to five males to spread the aggression or just removing one and just keeping one male with the females. Because when you're dealing with species that key in on each other, um, often more is better. Yeah, so I just worry that even with all that, you could still find yourself with a bit of an aggression issue. Nothing like splendens, but they can still be a little aggressive. Patrick Shaw, I have a scheduled power outage soon, three hours long. Will all the good bacteria die in my canister filter? Should I put the media in the tank with a battery-powered air stone or don't worry? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I, what I will say is that the media is more, the bacteria on the media in a canister filter is more likely to die than if that media was not in a canister filter. So if that was out... Um, I know if you think of like a, a shoe box, like a shallow container, plastic container, where you can put the media um, and have it with lots of surface area and maybe an air stone in there, that might be good. You could definitely put it in your tank like you're saying, but um, I would squeeze it out well before. That, that media can get all kinds of gunge in it that you might not want to introduce in your tank when you're about to go through a low oxygen situation because all the gunk you put in your tank is going to rob oxygen from the fish, uh, steal oxygen from the water column. That's why I think you could do it in the tank, maybe clean it out real well first, but it might be advantageous to put an air stone in the tank and then if you can find a, a second air stone that you can power with your battery powered pump, if that works, then put the all the canister filter stuff in a separate container so it's not robbing oxygen. Um, from the fish in the tank. So that's, those are my thoughts, Patrick. Three hours isn't too long. I, I would say in a healthy tank that isn't overstocked and doesn't have a bunch of extra uh, gunk in it in, in tiny little microorganisms and stuff that are robbing oxygen, uh, I would say that you'll probably be okay even if you did nothing. But um, I think it'd be better to do something like we talked about. Okay, chat jumped, so let me get 
Here we go. Here we go. Alrighty. Nope. <laughs> I thought I found it. There it is. There's Patrick. Okay, let me scroll down. There we go. T-Shot. Hey, T-Shot. Hope you're doing well. A Dan Switch UV sterilizer. 55 gallon fresh water. No current issues. Are they good for preventing issues? Worth setting up. I got one for free with my take stand. Thanks, Dan. So, provided you have one that actually does its job, and keep in mind that on most UV sterilizers, you're going to need to replace the bulb and, and casing, um, like the quartz casing and bulb, um, once every year or so. It, it depends on the manufacturer. It might be six months, might be a year in... I don't know, 14, it might be 14 months, but about every year, then um, it might work. And as long as it's a strong enough one that it actually can be effective in the amount of water you're putting through, and the other thing is the clarity of your water. Um, if there's lots of particulate matter in the water, the UV is much less effective. Um, I'm learning a lot about UV the last few weeks as I get ready uh, to buy a couple massive units for the warehouse. Um, so I would say as long as it's rated for how you're using it yeah I think it's worth it I think I think it'll keep your water clear I think that it'll prevent uh, ick and other uh, pathogens from building up as quickly in population level so I don't see anything wrong with UV at all not at all I don't think it's necessary but if you've got it and if it's rated to work in your system sure it'll it'll keep things nice and clear Ryan Hansen, any chance you'll be selling scuds again on Get Gills? By the time I set up a tank for them, they were no longer on Get Gills. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ryan. I wish I could. Um, so here's what happened. I got a, um, oh, pipefish. That's the one I didn't get. I did not get the pipefish in. Yep, yep. Um, so I, I was missing one, I guess. So I got a whole bunch of puffers in and I was expecting a bunch of pipe fish in and so I stopped selling because I knew I would need all the scuds I could get for them. So right now I'm not selling any because I have the, uh, the Shodene puffers and I need all the scuds I can get for them and for some of the other fish that I got in, some of the gobies and things that it takes a while to transition over to prepared foods. So I don't know, Ryan, when I'll be able to sell them again. I have a ton but puffers eat a ton, and so do gobies, so I'm burning through it pretty quick. Um, once, once my personal need eases, once I've sold through some of the stock that, that need them in order to do well, um, then I can probably start selling them again, but it just depends on how quickly things sell, and part of that depends on how things acclimate, and right now, um, Things seem good, but it could change tomorrow, right? So I'm not quite sure when I'll be able to do that again. Um, let's see if someone else has scuds. Just real quick. So let's go to get gills, type in scuds. Scud? Okay, scuds. Doesn't look like it. Shoot. I was hoping someone else could help you out. Um, hey, Jesse. You still trying to get rid of scuds? <laughs> Looks like T-Shot's looking. Just saying. I'm sorry, not T-Shot. Ryan Hansen is, is looking. The Chubby Guppy throwing down $9.99. Chubby Guppy, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Never required, but it does make the wife super happy. Thanks for the super chat. Hoon Aquatics, which of the import fish are impressing you the most so far? There is, let me see if I can find it and show it to you. Um, yes, yes, hey, there it is, this one, Sikiopus, uh, let's try to say this, Zosterophorus, this goby came in, and um, they look this good, they're really, really pretty. I've never seen this goby before in my life. Um, I kind of ordered it, just hoping it would do well, trying it out so far. Really hardy, no losses, out and about and personable, not scared at all when I come by the tank. And um, 
eating really well on like baby brine shrimp and scuds. I haven't been able to transition them to uh, dry food yet, but I didn't expect to. That that could take a few weeks. So those guys, I just was hoping they would look that good. Oftentimes you see pictures of fish, as, as you know, and it's like, oh, that's cool. And then you buy some and it's like, it doesn't look anything like the picture. And sometimes they do later. Like sometimes it just takes a while for them to grow up and color up or settle in or get in breeding coloration or whatever. But I've ordered gobies before and been disappointed. Um, but these delivered. So it was very nice. <laughs> Isaac Cornstubble, what fish did you get ordered in? Did you already read them all off? Any pistogramma watching like a hawk? No epistogramma. I'm sorry about that. Um, I went through the list... I want to say two live streams ago, so I'm probably not going to do it now because I already did that a little while ago. But about 40 species of rainbow fish, I believe. Um, several species of really cool gobies, that most of which I, I can probably guarantee you've never seen before. Um, some, a couple really rare rice fish that I don't think anyone else has. Uh, some of them I've never seen before. So it, it's, a, it's a cool order, but I don't want to go into detail because I think it was two weeks ago that we went over that. Sharon Miller, will you ever get female honey garamis again? I think so someday. Um, it's going to be a while though. I don't think I'll be doing more of your kind of common type garamis and things um, until the warehouse comes on board. It's so I'm small enough that it doesn't make sense for me to carry fish that most people can carry, that you can often find, not you personally, but that are often available at Petco or PetSmart. And I know there's people, um, and I'm flattered there, that there's people that um, even if they can find it at their local Petco or PetSmart, won't, they'll buy it from me instead. Um, so thank you to those loyal people. I think that's amazing. And hopefully I continue to earn that loyalty. I try every day. Um, but in general, it doesn't make sense to carry those fish right now when I'm small. So I have to differentiate. I have to try to carry stuff that you can't find anywhere else or that's hard to find anywhere else or that's hard to find healthy anywhere else, things like that. So um, when I get a little bigger, then I'll be able to balance that and, and carry some more common things as well. But right now it just doesn't work for the business model. But thanks for asking, Sharon. And I wish I did have some for you right now. Wait, what's, what's Scott Backer saying? <laughs> hey, Scott, hope you're doing well. Hope the discus are doing well. <laughs> He's wondering how far behind I am. <laughs> well, ain't never going to catch up is how far behind I am. <laughs> New Mexico Aquatics. When brought indoors, would you personally medicate and or quarantine fish that have sum summered in outdoor ponds? You don't have tubs, but you do know about pathogens. So I would just quarantine and probably not medicate, honestly. But I would keep them separate, which is, you know, what quarantine is, for a couple weeks. I would have a couple medicines on hand. I would definitely have Ikex on hand. I'd probably have Prazi on hand. And those are the main ones. Um, because even though they're in a pond, when you, and you put your tap water probably in the pond, a lot has changed with that water over the summer and the parameters are different enough that there can be some stress in that transition. So stress often brings about, you know, an, an ick outbreak or something. So I just be ready for those kind of stress related diseases. But in general, I would probably just uh, observe. Now, if I did that and there was a species that every time I moved them, got ick or something, then I would start prophylactically treating for that, but not in general. Jerry Serple Morris, I live near Los Angeles. Do you think it stays warm enough to leave my dwarf panda endlers outdoors year round or will I need to put them in soon? Thanks for your help. Um, I know I ask questions a lot. Jerry, I'm glad you ask questions a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Please come participate, everybody. Ask questions. I might not get to them, but when I can, I will get to them. Um, so I'm trying to think, so I used to live in Los Angeles in Studio City and um, it would get down, I mean there were nights it would freeze, it was rare, but it would happen. 
and it would regularly get down in the 40s at night. I don't know, personally, I would get nervous uh, once it got cooler than about 65 degrees with Endlers. That's, that's where I would start getting nervous. Now, other people that do this more than I do might say, oh yeah, but if you leave them out and it's a gradual transition, they'll do fine year-round. But I feel like down in the 40s is pretty darn cold for them. I, I would personally bring mine in um, of that species at, at, about, uh, at about 65 degrees or so. Um, but anyone else, please chime in. Chandra Sakar, what's your opinion on medicated food? Did you finally, did you find any safe sellers? I have to say that I haven't found a medicated food I really like yet, honestly. Um, here's the issue that I run into with it more than anything. When I really need the medicated food is when the fish first arrive. That's when I want to kind of prophylactically prevent issues. When they're freshly imported and I'm trying to prevent an outbreak or treat an outbreak if it appears. The issue with the medicated food is fish don't seem to like it much. It takes a lot of training to get them to eat it is what I've found. And so I've got these new fish, I want to medicate them now, but they really won't start eating the medicated food for often a, a, two weeks or more after I get them because they're new, right? And it's hard enough to get them to eat flake food, let alone medicated food. And so for my purposes, I'm finding it um, has quite a limitation on its utility just because I need it. Like I want to get the fish in, in that day or the next day, get that food into them. And most of them don't want to eat it that quickly. So that's my big issue. Now, that being said, there are fish I get in that will eat instantly. There's, for instance, guppies, if they've been fed flake foods and, and prepared foods and they're used to that, they'll gobble down medicated foods, no problem. But, um, but not all guppies will. If guppies are raised on a farm where that isn't standard fare, then they'll turn their nose up at it. Even a guppy will. So that's the issue I find. Now, so that's what I would say is if, if the fish are used to eating flake food and you have flake medicated food or used to eating pellets and you have pelleted food that's medicated, um, then it's probably not as big of an issue. But when I'm bringing in freshly imported fish, they don't learn to eat it fast enough. By the time they're eating it, it's like that the quarantine period's over is kind of what I've found. Generally, there are some exceptions. So that's my issue with it. Sand Creek Aquatics, thanks for the referral to Because Your Fish on Get Gills got more pee puffers on the way from him. Awesome. I hope they do well for you. And uh, Seth, it Because Your Fish, seems like a great guy. I've, uh, I've never actually bought fish from Seth, but I like the videos. Seems like he knows what he's doing. Seems like a good, honest person. And uh, he's provided stuff for our giveaways here before. So, yeah, I hope it goes well for you. I, I, I expect that it will. Fish Keeper Cole, I have heard that Garamis don't like to have tank mates that are very active, like Zebra Danios. Do you think that housing active fish with Garamis could hurt them and cause stress? I would say that, okay, there's lots of different types of Garamis, like licorice Garamis definitely will be stressed by that. But if we're talking about our standard dwarf Garamis, honey Garamis, um, the Trigonaster species, the Blue Garami, the Opal Garami, uh, Pearl Garamis, Moonlight Garamis, all those. What I would say is that once they settle in and know where the food is and all that, they're pretty hardy fish. Now, if there's one Garami in a tank and it's in a cloud of Zebra Danios, yeah, it's going to be stressed. But most people don't keep fish that way. So once they're settled in, I think they're going to be fine as long as it's not an overwhelming number of active fish. Garamis, though, they are a pretty sedate fish. Now, once they learn about the food, they're there super fast. Um, but I've definitely kept garamis with pretty active fish, um, provided they were already settled in, they already knew where the food was, they were feeding really quick and actively and all that then they did fine. But if you have a tank with a whole bunch of zebra danios in it, and then you put in a, uh, a uh, garami, and it's going into this tank brand new and doesn't know anything about it, 
then you're going to have a lot of stress. That's my thoughts, Cole, um, on that one. Brahmatron, you think there's any chance you'll ship to <laughs> Knuckleheads in Canada in the future? Um, I would like to in the future. That's a so I've dealt with um, import export licensing enough, and I've, I've dealt with uh, customs and fishing game and all that enough to know that I probably want to avoid that as much as possible if I'm being honest. Now, could we grow to the point where it would be worth doing that and develop enough business in Canada that there's someone whose job it is specifically to manage that, yeah, it could happen. But it's not in the plan in the foreseeable future. Um, right now, I'm just laser focused on doing one thing um, and do it really well and do it with the resources kind of that I have and the expertise I currently have. So um, I can't predict the future, but in the foreseeable future, I have no plans to do that. And it's, it's nothing against knuckleheads, as you put it, um, at all. It's, it's simply the... It would need to be enough volume, and it would need to be consistent enough that it made sense to kind of have someone cover that. All right. Go, Diego, go! Lots of people entering. How many people do we have? So... We've got 146 people have entered for Diego's Mystery 3 Plant Pack. That's pretty awesome. And we have 238 here. Hey, thanks for being here, everybody. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to share, that would be awesome. Let's get some folks in here. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. It would be greatly appreciated. No pressure, though. I, I get it. Like, But if you feel so inclined. <laughs> All right, Dank Tanks is here. Hey, Dank, good to see you. And so is Danikin. Hey, good to see you, Danikin. Hope everyone's. Oh, I missed the I missed the chat on Sunday. I bet I bet you're all back in in cahoots again. <laughs> I bet Danny's keeping Kenny on the straight and narrow again. Rockford Fishkeeping, take some pics of the work. I'm sure people would love to see. Other than me, the new location hatches and grow into a big, healthy fish place. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely. Uh, well, I say that. I plan on getting, uh, kind of documenting the plot as it develops. I, I do plan on doing that. Now, if doing that gets in the way of me actually making it happen, then, then I'll pull back a bit and it won't be quite as, uh, quite as frequent, but I do plan on doing that. I would like at the end of it all to be able to do one of those YouTube videos where there's a picture a day throughout the whole process and in like 30 seconds you see this empty plot of land go and become a warehouse that would be really cool um, we'll see if I can actually manage it though I mean, <laughs> I'll do my best and I plan on doing it I want to do it but I am doing everything I did before um, doing all these imports taking care of the customer base packing all the fish uh, maintaining all the aquariums down here and up in the annex so I'm still doing all that on top of basically building this new facility and it's not the type of facility where I can go to a local contractor and say I need a fish facility and they're like cool here's the price we'll make it happen no <laughs> this is different for kind of everyone here that builds stuff. So it has to be very hands-on. I have to find the equipment because it's pretty specialized and I could pay an engineering firm to do that, but it would take them forever and the cost would be exponential um, or exorbitant, I guess. It would be the proper term there, not exponential. But um, so I'm the guy. It's not like I'm to the contractors, here's what I want and they make it happen. I'm telling the contractors, here's what I want in great detail so that it can happen. So it's, it's, I'll do my best though. Big Yak 35, I am laughing so hard, almost forgot my question. The flagfish male is spawning naturally in a Cali 60 gallon, has moved sand and is guarding eggs. That's a comment, thank you. <laughs> Big Yak, awesome. That's really cool. That's really cool. I'm glad you could breed those guys. And they are one of those fish that um, 
I've read lots of reports that they breed like killifish, just lay their eggs in mops and stuff, or they kind of breed like sunfish. They'll make a little nest and, and guard them. So, yeah, it's pretty cool that you're seeing the more sunfish type behavior, it sounds like. Skippers Aquariums, hey, good, glad you could make it. Welcome, Skippers. And the rest of the mods, hello, hello, welcome, glad you're here. Okay, Trey Reppy, does the same line of sight apply if trying to breed a pistos in a community tank, or is breeding a pistos in a community something that should be reserved for Dean from an aquarium co-op? No. Um, so it often helps a pistos spawn if you're group breeding, because then the pair or the male or whoever wants to breed is uh, kind of triggered by the opposition and that helps that pair bond between the male and female become nice and tight because they're working together to defend their territory and make sure they have a good place to raise their babies against a rival pair of epistos. So what I've found is I have the best luck in kind of community type situations where a pair has to really work and not, not necessarily a community like this, although they breed all the time in there, but I mean a community of that same species of a pisto all together in a tank. Uh, because then when a pair pairs off and wants to breed, they have to work really hard to feel comfortable and get everyone out of their territory and stuff. And that just makes them bond up really tightly. So I actually think it helps breed a pistos when you have more than one pair together. And that can depend. Some of pistos are harem spawners, some are pairs. It depends on the spawning type. But in general, a little opposition from the same species uh, can, help, can help the process quite a bit. The key is to do it in such a way that that poor pair that isn't spawning or extra fish that isn't spawning isn't just hammered. It can get away, it can get food, it can live its life. Um, that's why the line of sight becomes important. Andrew Kurth, now, now if you want to avoid all that though, just keep a pair in a tank by themselves. You can have some success um, that way as well. Andrew Kurth, sorry, I currently have sunset honey gouramis trying to spawn, but the male cannot keep his bubble nest together. Okay, only running sponge filters in the tank with plants. Any ideas or tips? Yes. Turn off the sponge filter or turn it way down so there's like one bubble every three seconds. Now, you don't really want any surface agitation at all in the tank when they're spawning. Now, when you do that, there can be some consequences. So, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, a judgment call on your part. Is there enough, like, usually it's all these little microorganisms down in the detritus and the gravel and gunk in the sponge and all that is, is robbing oxygen from the water, right? Um, and, and that can lead to all kinds of issues, even with anabantoids like garamis that can breathe air from the surface. So the judgment call has to be if I cut this filter off or turn it down so much that it's almost off, I would turn it off personally. Um, is the result going to be, is the tank clean enough to handle that stagnation that will result? If not, I wouldn't do it because then you put everyone at risk. But if it's a nice clean tank and it can handle stagnation, then I would turn off the filter because that's going to be um, disrupting his bubble nest. You can also put, hopefully there's floating plants. They like to build their nest up in like water sprite and other floating plants. Um, you can do the trick of you take a styrofoam cup and you cut it in half and kind of tape that up to the side so it stays in place and they can build their bubble nest under that styrofoam cup. There's other things like that, but no surface agitation and something besides just water. Uh, something floating plants or something they can build their nest under will really help him with that. Another thing is, and I don't know if you can do this in your aquarium or not, but if you can drop the water level so there's only like uh, three, four inches of water, that can be very helpful. Um, although I think, now that I think about it, do honey gourami eggs float? I can't remember. Some species, their eggs sink, some they float naturally. But it really helps the fry. The fry aren't going to do really well if they become free swimming in deep water. They, they actually, the fry you kind of want in even shallower water at first, maybe around an inch or so, a couple inches. So those are my thoughts, Andrew. I, I hope that uh, is at least gets you started down a path. Um, Sylvia, 
Train is sorry. Hey, I got a question. You have a lot of better fish. I sorry. I was like, I do. <laughs> I have a lot of better fish at home, and my mom doesn't know anything about fish, so she put it with other better fish, and they keep fighting. So where should I put my better? Well, um, get them apart is the priority. So do you have some jars? Does your mom can um, find some canning jars? Something separate them out hopefully you are able to keep the water in those jars warm because nothing kills bettas faster than cold water except for two male bettas together fighting um, but ultimately you're gonna have to find a way to uh, house them all separately keep them warm and keep the water clean i don't know what else to tell you but for now get them apart find a way to get them apart and keep the water warm when you do that it could be that you need to run to your local pet smart or pet co and get a bunch of little like net breeders and put them around the edge of the tank so that the water's warm but they're all in their own little spot uh, that could be a place to start or a little they have like little betta barracks that you can put in a tank and keep three or four bettas in there they're very small though but for a temporary thing that could work um, one word of caution if you're doing betta barracks or doing like a, a live bear fry trap or something make sure that there's good circulation through it you don't really want it going stagnant um, I'm imagining this floating the aquarium or or put on the side of the aquarium but in the aquarium water itself um, you want a lot of slits in the bottom that water can come up and circulate or something like that if it's one of those kind that's pretty much solid plastic with a few holes poked through it that can be uh, that can get toxic really quick so those are my thoughts I I hope that's helpful but yeah you got to separate them and don't let them get cold all right, did we just hit the, oh, nope, it jumped. I was like, wait, I got to the, I caught up. I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> I knew there was no way. 249, 251, we broke 250. That's pretty cool. All right, that's great. We're not quite, our record was, what was it? 310, 311, but uh, 251, that's not bad for this little channel. Thanks for being here, folks. Thanks for spending your Wednesday night with me. Now, after me, Punchy Paints is going to go tonight at, I believe, uh, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, so about half an hour after I end. So if you want more goodness, Pam from Punchy Paints uh, has got you covered. I think we're going to go ahead and do the drawing now. It's 8.08 .08 my time here, and um, I like mixing it up sometimes so that folks that come in the last five minutes hoping to just win without watching get their plans foiled. So let's do it. This is for Diego's plant giveaway. He's giving away a mystery pack of three plants. So if you win, send me an email, dan at dancefish.com. I will get you in touch with Diego and you guys can figure out uh, shipping details. But here we go. I'm curious. Okay, so we have, hang on, before I do this, 252 watching. I'm curious to see what happens when we do the giveaway and it's over. I wonder if the numbers just totally drop or people stick around. That'll be neat to see. So Punchy Paints, speaking of Pam from Punchy Paints, Punchy Paints, hey, <laughs> Pam, you have won. That's awesome because Pam has been a mod for a long time and helps out on this channel quite a bit along with many other channels. Um, she's just one of the people in the fish fam that, that keeps us going. So Pam, congrats, well-deserved. Um, I've already got your email and everything, so I'll just get you in touch with uh, Diego over at Petsotics. Awesome. Now let's see if the numbers just plummet or if people stick around. Hey, wait, I missed some super chats. I missed Chattanooga Ed hitting me in the face with a fox cat. <laughs> as long as you keep paying five bucks, Ed, you can keep hitting me in the face. <laughs> and I see one here from Ginger Graves. I can't read it, but it's $4.99. Ginger, I'll be able to read it in a bit, and I will um, read it out and say thanks again. But right now, it won't let me scroll down far enough to see it because YouTube Studio, there's a lot of good things about it. But oh, there it is. Boss. Well, I think. Oh, did you notice? You notice the beach? <laughs> Ginger, thanks so much for the super chat. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm thinking about you and just I'm rooting for you lady I'm rooting for you all right 
The first one I can see after the big jump is Joseph DeLuca. I just ordered six of the um, female in Bellis. Your new order are puffers, spotted Congo puffers. Yes, the ones I have are the Tetradon um, Shodenai, which is the Congo spotted puffer. And so far, so good. Um, I'm always cautious with puffers, though, but they're eating their snails, they're eating their scuds, they seem to be doing fine. They're fat, chubby little guys, so I think we're going to be okay. The good thing about these is these were not wild caught. Um, I was able to get these from the breeder, so um, they didn't come in with sunken bellies and obvious parasite issues and all that. So I'm still pro prophylactically uh, treating them and stuff because you never know, but they came in fat and sassy, which is such a relief. Like, I just, I, I love puffers and so I order them, but every time I order them, I dread it a little bit because I'm like, I know that it might take me three, four months before I get them healthy and ready to sell. This, this supplier though, um, they are from out of state, they're from overseas, but they are captive bred, so they're in such better shape than like your Amazon puffers, which are all wild collected and things like that. I do want to say though that um, yes, I'd be happy to sell you puffers. However, if anyone's in the market for Congo spotted puffers, the person to get them from, if they have them available, is Preston John. Um, so you can check the the uh, the Cichlid Shack. Um, that's where Preston John sells his his puffers through. Preston's here in the United States. He breeds all his own fish. Um, he makes videos showing how they breed, how to care for them and all that. Um, there's nothing like buying directly from the breeder. There's nothing compares to that. Um, and especially if that breeder is in your country. It's just, there, it takes away dimensions of stress that are inevitable if you're doing an import, even if you're buying directly from the breeder via import. So I know Preston doesn't have any available right now, so don't flood his inbox or whatever saying, I need the puffers. Uh, I know he's out right now. And I know he's been out for a while, which is one reason I was like, okay, I'll bring him in. But anyone in the future, if you're watching this, if you're interested in Congo spotted puffers, check out Preston John first, just because um, if you can buy hobbyist raised fish, <laughs> you know, uh, they just, it takes away a few orders of magnitude of risk if you can do that. But um, yes, I've got some and I know Preston doesn't right now. And so um, hopefully they'll be ready to go in another week and a half, two weeks. Sometimes I take a little longer with puffers just cause, but they're doing great. Moonstone Aquatics, get me another one of those datinoids. The things are like puppy, <laughs> but without the poop. <laughs> Love it so much. <laughs> Datinoids are like puppies, but without all the poop. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure there's poop, but you don't have to scoop it off the lawn. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I would love to. Datinoids are going to need, uh, I feel like, harder water than I have now. The warehouse has uh, a little harder water than I have here, though, at my home. So once I'm in the warehouse, I might be able to try some harder water things. But datinoids, I, I shy away from just because... Um, well, a, a lot of them get pretty big, and I don't want to get fish that could outgrow a tank here in case I didn't sell them quickly enough. I don't want them to get big and outgrow their tank. Um, but B, most of them I feel need like hard water, maybe some brackish water and things like that. But I do like them. I don't know a ton about them, so there's something that I need to look into still. Riverbend Aquatics, do you have any tips for keeping juvenile balloon Belly German Blue Rams. I have a male and female, I believe. Oh, okay, I have a male and female, I believe, anyway. And the female just died at day 13. Okay, so a couple things with rams is keep them hot. I would recommend 86 degrees would be great. Um, and keep the water really clean. Besides doing that, it's pretty much a gamble, honestly. It depends on the supply side. If you get a batch from a place that um, has good hardy rams and they're well acclimated and quarantined, they'll probably do well for you. If you get a batch from somewhere that doesn't have good quality rams or they're still stressed from import or whatever, it's very likely they'll succumb. So 
what I found is even for me, sometimes I'll get a batch in and despite everything I do and try, they do poorly. And then I'll get a batch from a different supplier and they're tough as nails and active and happy. So honestly on ramps, if you're keeping them warm and keep it, keeping them clean um, and you have food they like and all that, it's kind of a gamble just based on supply would be what I would say from what I've experienced with that fish. And I think that's true of a lot of fish. Like um, you'll hear, for example, that pseudomogil fricata are delicate, that, um, that if you let water parameters go a little bit, they all die off and stuff like that. And I'm not sure if that's true. What I have experienced is there are some suppliers that if I get fricata and that happens, I will lose them all. And there's other suppliers, if I get fricata and that happens, they're like tough as nails. They're, they're just super vibrant and hardy. So I think with a lot of the fish, um, sometimes we, we dub them as delicate just because in our personal experience they don't do well. When in reality, if they came from a different supplier, and I'm thinking supply side, uh, a level beyond me, right? I'm thinking the breeder or the um, wholesaler or whatever. Um, depending on where they come from, they can be super hardy. So that it really does make a difference on if you have a local pet store and they didn't do well for you, then let them know, look, I want these fish. They didn't do well for me. Um, if you ever get them from a different supplier, let me know so I can try them again. Because sometimes just switching up suppliers is enough to give you success. So that's been my observation with especially German blue rams. Some suppliers have rock solid fish, some don't. All right. It's 818. Okay, we got 12 more minutes. We're still at 2. 134 people, even though we already did the giveaway. That's not too bad. We only lost, what, around 20 or so? Eh, not bad at all. Thanks for hanging on, everybody. Trey Rippy, if you want to do a time lapse, I would highly recommend a GoPro with a USB solar cell. Now, there's an idea. That was way more than I thought. I thought just drive by with my phone and go chick once a day. Chick, chick. Yeah, but cool. I was just thinking still frame pictures, not like not like video that's sped up. Um, but cool, that's good to know, Trey. Thanks. Unso fish tricated. Yes. HC Aqua bettas will go crazy for them. Oh, that was for HC Aqua, sorry. I was just reading the one after Trey Rep. I didn't realize it wasn't highlighted for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Here's one for me. Rockford Fish Keeping. About the honey's bubble nest, honey garami's bubble nest, can you do what better people do and use bubble wrap on the top of the water? Sure, that could be useful. Now, of course, you don't want to put it across the entire tank. The, the garamis and bettas and such have to be able to get up to the air, but over a small section of the tank where they might build their nest under it, sure, that's something you could try as well. Yep, absolutely. But it's going to be hard to keep a sponge filter going at a rate where the sponge filter is effective and have the honey garami be able to maintain its nest just because there'll be a lot of water circulation, you know, even if there isn't surface agitation that happens. And in the wild, they're building these nests in like swamps tons of vegetation uh, like grass sticking out of the water and there the grass holds it together there's no movement of the water the grass shields it from the wind um, so stillness is what they need and and some cover the bubble wrap could totally help with that <laughs> candy overhauls no way she says at Dan's fish but since I was six months behind um, I don't remember what that was in reference to, but I'm sure it was totally apropos at the time. Mega Mindy Lou, sorry I'm so late. M Mega Mindy Lou, off to the principal's office with you. No tardiness. <laughs> Glad you're here, Mega Mindy. Quick question. Got uh, My gold white clouds are getting black dusty spots on them. Are these black dusty spots tiny little like powder things, or are they kind of like large spots that look like uh, like a, 
how do I describe it, like a spotted sword tail or something like that. If it's really, really fine, dusty spots, then it could be a, some kind of protozoan, uh, and it, it hopefully isn't, but it could be velvet. Um, but A, I'm not a veterinarian, and B, even a veterinarian uh, wouldn't be able to really diagnose it without seeing the fish. But um, personally, okay, what would I do if this was my fish? If this was my fish, and I noticed like a fine dusting of basically really fine black powder across the fish, then I'd instantly think, hey, this could be velvet. I'd probably remove them to a separate bear tank, and I would treat them with copper because that's the only thing I've found that I know of that's effective against velvet. Now, that might be overkill. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something that would be treatable with Ikex or Praziquantal. Um, or maybe it's not a problem at all. Maybe, like, my, uh, I have the uh, Starlight Placostomus in here. And there was one I was really worried about because it would hang out on the edge of that planter. Oh, you can't see it. The edge of that planter right there. And um, it had, like, this gold, really fine gold dust all over it. And I was like, man, that's got to be some kind of protozoan thing. That's got to be an issue. And I was really worried about it. I kept an eye on it, though. It ate really well. No distressed breathing. No clamping. No, nothing. Just that. So I took a picture of it, and I sent it to a Pleco group. And I was like, has anyone ever seen anything like this? And no one had. So I, was, I couldn't figure it out. And then I finally realized, after a few days of observing and trying to figure it out, that it was just that spot. In that spot the light hit him at the right angle um, that all the tips of his little scales, those really fine kind of pointed tips on his scales, were catching the light and lighting up a gold color. So it was just a lighting thing. So I only bring that up to say that um, diagnosing these things is, is kind of complex and I don't feel qualified to do it, but if I thought I had velvet, that's how I would treat it. Separate bare quarantine tank with just an air stone, clean water, no food, no filtration, and just copper for a week to 10 days. Copper safe is what I would use from Mardell Fritz. Rockford Fish Keeping. For the bettas, they have that hang on outside run by air breeding tank. <laughs> They have that hang on outside run by air breeding tank. They come in small, medium, and large that holds three sections. Yep, that could be helpful. Something like that. Some way to keep them warm, but separate them. All right, ah oh, man, chat jumped. It's because I'm so far behind. It does that to me all the time. Okay, cool. I think I know where I'm at. Yep. Yep, almost there. Sorry, almost I there. Understand. <laughs> I didn't say okay, Google. You did not have to do that. My phone thought I was uh, trying to get its attention. <laughs> it happens all the time. I'll be in meetings with someone, and suddenly my phone will be, I'm sorry, I don't understand. And I'm because I didn't ask for your help. <laughs> Big yak. Oh, and then it. Nope. Did it just jump? Wait, hang on. I think it just jumped. No, we're still good. Okay. Big Yak, I'll finally get to it now. 35. Profo, new word for something. Let me think. Profo. Profo, new word for something. Let me think. I'm sure that made sense when it was listed, but my brain can't comprehend what that was tied to. But uh, thanks for the comment. <laughs> Nurse Beck is throwing down $9.99 with a... <laughs> This always cracks me up. It's a lemon doing like the, what the, what would you call that with the rattles? Um, I'm going to call it the cha-cha. I know it's not, but when you've got the rattles, I forget what that dance is called. Thank you so much, Nurse Beckus, for the super chat. Always appreciated. Never required, but it does really help. And just one more fish with Josh throwing down five bucks. And I can't see the comment because YouTube won't let me scroll down, but I'll keep an eye out for it. Joseph DeLuca, when will they, the spotted Congo puffers, be ready for sale? Uh, let's say one and a half to three weeks is my guess. I never know for sure. It's always up to the fish. Um, if they do well and nothing happens, then, then I'll start selling them, um, provided everyone looks fine. But there have been times where I'm like, oh, great, I can list that fish tomorrow. And then I look tomorrow and I'm like, 
oh wait I can't something's something's a little funky there so it's totally up to the fish when the fish seem healthy and solid and like they can easily handle the stress of shipping without um, without developing problems uh, then I go ahead and ship them and that's usually two weeks from the date I received them with things like puffers it, it could be a little longer even if they're doing well just because I'm a little cautious with them but maybe not since these are like bred and raised in captivity they might just be like there was never any problem they're doing great they're acting normal they're eating fine why wait Petsonics, have you looked into using square for get gills or as a second option nope I haven't um, I believe back when we first started developing the site we did look at square and I can't remember why we decided to not go with them oh I know why it's it's that whole multi vendor marketplace thing um, there's a lot of payment software that's really good on single vendor transactions but I don't think we found more than one just stripe that can really handle multi vendor transactions simultaneously which is the experience we want to give buyers who are shopping at get gills because it's a better experience so um, yeah I I've used square for other things but I don't think it'll work on our platform River Bend Aquatics let's see we've got three minutes I can get a couple more thank you that's what I've noticed my first time with the balloon variety of Rams well um, hope they do well for you next time Mega Mindy Lou I do have black substrate oh my spotted quarries are darker than when I got them wondered if the golden white clouds will do the same never had them before um, I don't know if they'll darken but one thing that can happen probably not so much with um, golden white clouds but with quarries definitely is if you have them on sand they'll kick up the sand and it'll settle on their body and it'll look like ick or velvet or some kind of issue and it's not it's just they're burrowing in the sand and it goes up and lands on them um, so there can be things that fool you into thinking that you have a problem I hope you don't have a problem but there can definitely be some things that fool you into that. Okay, now I can see it, Josh. I have Fundalopanchax Gardneri in a deary, just coming out of juvenile stage. Awesome. How about we give the first pair away next week? I love giving the first away. That would be awesome, Josh. Um, I do have someone lined up for next week. It's probably not a problem to add on to that. Let me just make sure they're cool with that. I'm sure they are. Um, in fact, I think I should be the person that decides that, right? So I'm going to say yes, let's do that next week. Um, but just be aware it might be in conjunction with another giveaway as well. But that's cool. That just makes it more fun for everybody. So yes, let's do that. Josh, would you send me an email, uh, Dan at Dance Fish, just because it, so it gets in my workflow so I don't forget that and, and, uh, and not do it next week? I would appreciate that. I know it's weird. You're like doing me a favor and I'm asking you to email me. <laughs> <laughs> but in the middle of the live stream here, it's hard for me to get that in my workflow. So yeah, let's do it. That sounds awesome. Kayla's Aquatics with Pippi Longstocking. And let's see if there's a comment with that, if I can find it. $9.99 from Bob. Thank you, Bob. Always appreciated. Never required. But as you know, it makes Brenda super happy. And of course, that's my cue that we're about done. Um, I have time for one more. I got one minute. Calm down, people. Riverbend Aquatics, the only thing that my local fish store says that they do is deworm all of the rams of any type that come in, which they say helps make them healthier. It can for sure. Um, it can for sure. And when I was talking about supply, I wasn't necessarily talking about your local fish store. I was talking about where they get their fish, the, the, the place they were raised, basically. So... Um, maybe try again with this batch that they have if it doesn't go well tell them something's going on um, let me know when you get a batch from a different supplier so they're coming from a different breeder hopefully to the store and then you can try a fish from that different breeder and maybe they'll do better for you um, yeah that's just my thought on that okay now we really do have to end it orange cones another fine show why thank you thanks to everybody who hung out and made this a fun night thanks to the mods for all their amazing work let's not forget to support punchy paints 
one of my great mods who is going at probably 9 p.m. tonight in about half an hour. Thanks to everybody that gave a super chat. It's always appreciated and it really does help out. Um, all the comments and questions, please ask away, comment, question. Um, as long as you're not just listing the same comment or question over and over and over, it's always welcome. And worst case is if I've already read a few of your comments, um, I didn't do it tonight, but maybe I just skip them and go to someone else, right? So everyone gets a turn. But don't feel like you can't leave a comment or question. That's that's always appreciated because it makes things lively and fun, I think. It gets the discussion going. Anyway, I will see you all next week at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Hopefully by then, I've got um, some bids uh, kind of solidifying some, from some uh, subs, subcontractors. Although it would probably be another week actually before... It takes them a week or two to turn around bids, so it probably won't happen that quick. But hopefully I have more good news, and we're getting even closer. But until next Wednesday, I hope you have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.